As the primary elections approach, one in three Californians say jobs, economy, inflation or gas prices are the top issues facing the state today. Consumers are switching to cheaper items, reducing food away from home and delaying retirement in an effort to combat rising costs. According to a news survey by the nonprofit Public Policy Institute of California, 27% of Californians think inflation, jobs, and the economy are the state's top issues ahead of the June 7th primary election. The other top issues are housing costs and availability, followed by homelessness, gas and oil prices, water availability, and drought, respectively. Rising gas, food, and consumer goods prices have sent inflation to 40-year highs in the United States. 37% of those surveyed say they are financially worse off today than they were a year ago. The latest Real Financial Progress Index from BHO Harris Bank showed that consumers are switching to cheaper items, reducing food away from home, and delaying retirement in an effort to offset rising costs. The leader of a Mexican church pleads guilty. California Attorney General Rob Bonta announced he had secured a guilty plea and conviction on multiple felony counts of sexual assault against the head of a Mexico-based evangelical church that claims more than one million followers worldwide. Nason Joaquin Garcia is the leader of the Guadalajara-based church known as La Luz del Mundo, or the Light of the World. He pled guilty to the counts involving three separate minors. The conviction comes ahead of the trial which was set to begin today. Sentencing is currently scheduled for Wednesday. According to prosecutors, five victims, some of them minors, alleged that they were raped or otherwise sexually abused by Garcia. Prosecutors also cited a video in which Garcia is seen watching while a young boy has sex with a member of his own family. Internet sites say the church has between 1 million and 5 million followers worldwide in more than 50 countries, including many followers in the United States. The city of Los Angeles is changing how homeless encampments near schools are enforced. A majority of council members voted to ban all encampments near schools, a change from only limiting certain encampments before. Two council members spoke against the change. The Los Angeles City Council backed a proposal to amend the city's law against homeless encampments. To prohibit the sleeping, lying, or storing property within 500 feet of a school and a daycare center. The current ordinance already restricts sleeping and encampments within 500 feet of schools and daycare facilities. But the restrictions only apply after each individual location is approved for enforcement by the City Council. On Tuesday, the council voted 13 to 2 to have the city attorney prepare the ordinance adjustment. The amendment will need to be approved by the council before going into effect. Council President Nuri Martinez said that many teachers, principals and parents had reached out concerning the encampments. In reference to the encampments, Los Angeles Unified School District Superintendent Alberto Carvalho says, I've seen elementary schools with conditions that none of us as parents we find acceptable for our children. Carvalho told the council that he himself had experienced homelessness when he was 18. Councilman Mike Bonin, who also has experienced being unhoused, voted against the ordinance. Councilwoman Nithya Rahman joined Bonin in opposition. Both Bonin and Rahman also voted against approving an ordinance last summer. That ordinance prohibited obstructing the public right of way in several areas of the city. What do you think when someone says, describe a fish? Well, in California, you can now answer that with bumblebees. That comes after a recent court decision. As absurd as it may sound, it's in an effort to protect the little pollinators. Bumblebees are now eligible for protection as endangered or threatened fish under California law. The Sacramento-based California Court of Appeals reversed a lower court's ruling on May 31st. The decision is in favor of seven environmental groups and the state's Fish and Game Commission. The groups argued that the California Endangered Species Act, or CESA, does not cover insects. Associate Justice Ronald Robbie wrote for the appeals court, While fish is commonly understood to refer to aquatic species, the term of art employed by the legislature is not so limited. The CESA itself does not define fish, but the law is part of the California Fish and Game Code. The code's definition includes any mollusk, crustacean, invertebrate, or amphibian. In 2020, the California Superior Court ruled that the law's reference to invertebrates had to be read in context and included only aquatic animals. 
However, several agricultural groups filed suit in Sacramento County Superior Court over the lack of insect protection. People on Twitter questioned the decision. One said, I studied marine biology at university. This makes my head ache. Another speculated, the original law just had a strange definition of fish that included a number of things that a more colloquial use of the word wouldn't. Another said, I was today years old when I found out laws can change the definition of words. Another asked, you need a license to catch bees? I mean, since they are fish. The Fish and Game Commission has designated four bee species as candidate species, providing them protections while it considered whether to list them as endangered. It's one thing to fly to Hawaii, but what about another mode of transportation? One man is about to go there by kayak alone. We spoke to the man that's made the daunting journey his mission. See if you can guess how many days he'll be at sea. In the coming weeks or even days, one man in the Bay Area plans to embark on a journey that he's been waiting for for four years. Now, ever since a test run last summer, he's been preparing ever since. He says this time, all he needs is good weather. Cyril Deramo is French born and currently lives in the Bay Area. He's made it his mission to solo kayak from San Francisco to Honolulu. Uh, here's what I need to do. I need three days with no wind so I can go off the coast as far as possible. In the summer of 2021, he made his first attempt. He said it was a learning experience to test the waters. Maybe, you know, if I do 30 miles per day, that's 90 miles off the coast. And then I'm far enough so that the wind will not bring me back, okay? But the wind started to pick up and more and more and more. Deramo said it got to the point where it got dangerous for his life. So he and his on-land team called in for a rescue back to shore. But this was surely not the end of his journey. Obviously, it's a struggle. For 70 days, it's going to be hard, hard, hard. But when you make it, you pass your own batteries, and then you're so proud of yourself. You, you Like, wow, it's fantastic. That's why I want to do it again. To give a feeling of how far Hawaii is, flights from San Francisco to both Honolulu and New York take about the same amount of time. What is a five and a half hour flight time will take him over two months of paddling. He previously earned the Guinness World Record from Monterey to Hawaii, but with a team of four on a rowing boat. They finished in 39 days. But for solo kayaking, he said there were only six other people that have done it before. Nothing will teach you anything until you put your butt in the boat and you go out there. There's really nothing. You have to do it. That's experience. And I can tell you about how it feels to be in a small cabin, like in a 40 miles per hour wind with waves that are five meters high. You don't know until you do it. Deramo started kayaking at the age of 32. It's the things he sees while out at sea that makes it worth it. There's something about being in the middle of the ocean where you don't see land for two months where you're connected with nature. Like, imagine if you have to go away for two months, there's no email, there's no internet, there's no phone, there's nothing, just you in the moment. The only thing that is important is to keep going forward and enjoy the wind, the rain, the animals, maybe you see a whale, maybe you see a shark. But what I love myself is the birds. My first crossing on the boat, after three weeks, Three weeks and we don't see land. There's like an albatross that comes out of nowhere. What? What has been, what? How did he come here? It's fantastic. It's beautiful. Deramo's game plan is to kayak 30 miles by day and an additional 10 miles by night as the waves push him while he sleeps. He's been rigorously preparing and he showed us a type of training boat he uses. So this is a surf ski. It's a kayak that is performance. It's very tippy but it's made for the ocean. So once you have a little wave, wow, you go so fast, it's so fun. I love it. Dermo's actual ocean kayak was custom built in England and named Valentine after his sister. So I have to mix the training. So for me, I do yoga, I run, I do biking, kayaking. I mix all the training. Maybe one day I will do two hours of yoga in the morning, two hours of running in the afternoon. Physical conditioning isn't the only aspect that's required. There's also the mind and technical know-how. There's the mental part. 
how do you become not crazy alone? You know, <laughs> I'm already crazy, so. <laughs> But there's also, you have to know electricity because if you have a problem with the solar panels, the battery, you have to be able to repair. Could you talk about your food supply and water? Of course. So the water, I have a machine called the water maker. Uh, it's a reverse osmosis that takes the water from the ocean and removes the salt. Right, so I can make my own water. Out in the ocean, he may be paddling for 10 to 12 hours a day. So it's really light and it's like this. So right and left right and left so i need to eat a lot in freeze-dried food bars electrolytes vitamins all that stuff to make sure that i replenish what i use Dermo has on land support to communicate with each day for statistics and weather stats i do this adventure because that's what that's my passion to be on the water and i follow my dreams and not everybody has to follow like me and but if you want to climb a mountain, if you want to live overseas, you want to learn a language, you have to do it. Because the energy that you have when you follow your passion makes you do everything. He says he doesn't mind the struggle as his eyes are set on reaching paradise at the end of the journey. Aloha! <laughs> David Lamb, NTD News, California. California's cherry season is in full swing. After a two-year hiatus, one city brought back its annual cherry festival celebration with a parade over the weekend. The cherry parade returned to the city of San Leandro, California. The city also celebrated its 150th birthday. Um, I was actually a little girl at when we did the 100th. So when, when they had the 100th celebration in town, it was a citywide complete celebration. And I can still remember sitting on the curb and um, watching the parade go by. The Cherry Parade has been around since 1906. I think there's just something sort of vintage and sort of cutting edge. And um, I think San Leandro is a renaissance city. This year, there were over 50 entries led by the San Leandro High School Marching Band. They were followed by city officials, dance groups, a pet grooming company, Boy Scouts, a meditation group, and more. After this pandemic and so much going on for all of our lives, we're actually having a full year of people coming out again and enjoying each other. This community has a history, a long history of enjoying themselves and loving their, their community. Following the parade were a few events, activities, and food. California's cherry season usually starts mid-May through June.